Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about arbors and trellises, and we'd like to thank Steve Campisi for a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and for sharing the podcast. We really appreciate it. And Cindy is almost finished with Book 15. Woohoo. In ancient Rome and Greece, they built arbors to grow vining plants on and to create a shady area to rest. In the 1800s, some home designs had an arbor placed next to the house surrounding a window, so plants could be grown to create shade over the window in summer. Andrew Downing, a landscape designer and editor of the Horticulturist magazine in the 1800s, suggested placing arbors covered with climbing plants near the front porch or the entrance of a home to create a shaded seating area. Hmm. The University of Florida says an arbor is a small structure usually covered in vines to provide a shady space. Most arbors are going to have four posts and an open roof design, kind of like a pergola. But it's different? Yes, it's like a mini pergola. The posts are going to create an opening three to eight feet wide, and the sides are going to be two to three feet deep. The sides are generally covered with a trellis for climbing plants, and the roof design can be curved, flat, or peaked, and it's usually seven to ten feet tall. Okay. An arbor can be used as a decorative entrance to a garden, path, or a walkway, and you can place it in front of a fence gate or you can have a gate built into the posts. So if you would think of a house with a white picket fence, okay, and they have an archway where the gate is, right? the arbor would be that archway? Right. Yeah, it'd be a focal point for the gate. So I'm giving a better visual than what you described, <laughs> I think. Large arbors can have seating on both sides with the center open, or the seat can be framed by the sides. And when the arbor is covered with plants, it's going to create a shady spot in your yard or your garden. Mm -hmm. Two post arbors with a trellis in between the posts makes good screening for garbage cans, your recycling bins, a compost bin. You can set this in front of pool equipment or an air conditioning unit, or you can use it to block the view to your neighbors. Did you describe a trellis yet? So a trellis is an open framework. It's intersecting vertical and horizontal pieces that a plant will grow on. So it's like super big screening. So it's kind of like lattice, but lattice is more decorative and flimsy. Right. Yeah. So lattice is generally used to block the view. You'd use that maybe under a deck so you can't see. But you just said to use trellis to block the view of your neighbors. (laughs) Right. Right. So trellises are heavy duty. You'd grow plants on them and use the plants to obscure the view for something you don't want to see, like your neighbors. Right, but or, when we were at the home center this week, right. and you asked for trellises, they sent us to where the lattice was. Right. Because I, I think, lattice looks like trellis. Right, and I think a lot of people use these terms interchangeably, but lattice is generally lightweight, where a trellis is heavier for plants. I've seen multiple two-post arbors with trellises between them to screen one or two sides of a patio or a deck, And you can use two post arbors at the back of a garden for climbing plants, where you can also use a trellis for a garden, but a two post arbor is going to be much bigger. And the top of two post arbors usually have two rafters or beams that connect the posts, and that's going to make it more decorative. Mm -hmm. You can purchase an arbor kit from a home center or online, or you can build one yourself out of wood. The most popular arbor kits are going to be metal, wood, or vinyl. Iron and steel arbors are going to vary in thickness and weight, and they're going to have a protective coating or a powder coat finish to help resist rust. Mm -hmm. Aluminum arbors are corrosion resistant and durable. Vinyl, plastic, or composite arbors are low maintenance and generally lighter weight. And you should be comparing the warranties when you're shopping models. I saw some of the vinyl arbors with a 20-year warranty. Wow. Wood arbors are made from a few different types of wood. 
Fir, oak, and pine should be treated with a wood preservative, paint, or stain to increase the lifespan. Redwood and cedar have protective oils, and they'll resist damage from weather and pests. Ground contact pressure-treated wood is resistant to decay, water, and insects. When you're comparing arbor kits, look at the mounting extensions or ground spikes that will anchor the arbor. Some of the lightweight metal arbors with very thin posts are designed just to be pushed into the ground, so you'd have to add a ground stake or a spike to make it more secure. Mm -hmm. I looked at some of the recommended installation instructions for a few models. Well, this should be exciting. (laughs) A vinyl arbor I looked at had 30-inch post extensions to anchor the arbor into the ground, but they only recommended burying it a few inches below grade. Hmm. Another vinyl arbor I looked at recommended digging 10-inch deep holes, 6 inches in diameter, and then setting the mounting extensions into the hole and filling it with soil. Or, they said, dig 18-inch deep holes, 6 inches in diameter, and then fill the hole with concrete, if Hmm. you want it more permanent. Right. A wood arbor I looked at with metal ground spikes on the bottom of it wanted 8-inch diameter holes, 14 inches deep, and they said this can be filled either with gravel or concrete. An arbor with 4x4 posts recommended 10-inch diameter holes, 30 inches deep, and fill the holes with sand, gravel, or concrete. If you're building an arbor and using wood posts, there's a product called Post Protector. It's P-O-S-T, capital P-R-O-T-E-C-T-O-R. This is for pressure-treated or cedar posts. It's an HDPE covering that you slide over your post. What does that mean? So it's plastic. And it's going to create a barrier between your post and wood-destroying organisms in the soil. If you have treated posts, it's going to reduce leaching of the chemicals into the soil. You want to keep those chemicals in the posts because it poisons the wood fibers, and that prevents insects and microorganisms from infesting and feeding on the wood, Hmm. which is the main cause for decay in wood posts. Oh, no. To dig a post hole, you can use a long-handled drain spade, and this is a handy shovel for gardening and landscaping. It has a long, narrow blade for digging holes. Some top-rated drain spades come from Nupla, it's N-U-P-L-A, Razorback, R-A-Z-O-R, capital B-A-C-K, and Bully Tools, B-U-L-L-Y, capital T-O-O-L-S. For only digging holes, a post hole digger has two blades and two handles, and the blades are hinged, so when you pull the handles apart, it closes the blade so you can pull soil out of the hole that you're making. Right. Some top-rated post hole diggers come from Craftsman, True Temper, it's T-R-U-E, capital T-E-M-P-E-R, Ames, A-M-E-S, and Simpole, it's S I M. P-O-L-E. You can use a garden auger that you attach to a drill to create holes. Some top-rated garden augers come from Power Planter and Ames. Power Planter is P-O-W-E-R, capital P-L-A-N-T-E-R, and they have a good selection of widths and lengths for three-eighths and half-inch drills. Before you dig a hole in your yard, you should call 811 or go to call811.com, and that's C-A-L-L, the numbers, 811.com. They're going to contact the utility companies in your neighborhood, and they'll come out to your home and mark any buried utilities with paint or flags or both. Mm -hmm. And I've used them quite a few times over the years. It's a great service, and it's free. Exciting. Some top-rated arbors come from Vita, it's V-I-T-A, Greenstone, it's G-R-E-E-N, capital S-T-O-N-E, and Duratrel, D-U-R-A dash T-R-E-L. And I saw a few wood arbors with seats built into the arbor Mm -hmm. from Rowlison Garden Products. It's R-O-W-L-I-N-S-O-N. This is an English company that was founded in 1926, and they spell Arbor, A-R-B-O-U-R-S. So I thought that was pretty cool. 
How else do you spell it? A R B O R. Oh, it is exciting, Tracy. <laughs> A trellis comes in a range of materials just like an arbor and different styles. They can be wall-mounted or freestanding. They can be flat, cone-shaped, or have an A-frame. You want to match the plants you plan on growing with the open space between the vertical and the horizontal sections and the material. One article I read said plants like cucumbers, peas, and squash have tendrils that reach up and out to grab onto something to climb on, and they do best with sturdy, non-metallic trellises. Right. Some plants, like tomatoes and sweet potatoes, they don't have tendrils. They're going to need plant ties to help support the plant as it grows, and they do better with trellises with more open space. And this will allow you to weave the plants between the framing to help support it. Hmm. When you're picking your trellis, think about the plants that you're going to be growing on it, if you have plants that are going to die off during winter, you may want a more decorative trellis. And compare the mounting extensions or ground spikes that come with the trellis, especially if you're going to have heavier plants or if you're going to have garden plants with heavy fruit. Okay. I spoke to Nature Hills about vines for an arbor or trellis. They're an online nursery. They said when you're selecting vines, know how big they're going to get. Some vines are aggressive, and they can overtake an arbor or a trellis, causing it to sag, lean, or pull apart wood slats. They said wisteria and trumpet creepers are aggressive. And I read an article from the University of California that said trumpet vines can grow as fast as 2 feet per week and reach a height of 30 feet. Nature Hill says you can use aggressive plants like trumpet creeper for covering an ugly cement or block wall, covering rocky soil, or you can use something like this as ground cover. If you don't care about flowers and want to cover your arbor fast, Engelman Ivy, it's E-N-G-E-L-M-A-N, has pads that attach to most surfaces, and this will grow in almost every climate in full sun or partial shade. The leaves are red and green during summer, and in fall they turn red and purple. Boston ivy has tendrils that grip onto surfaces, and this grows well in most areas except for the far north and south of the U.S. It has green leaves and tiny greenish-white flowers in spring, and then the leaves turn red in fall, and this grows well in full sun to partial shade. They said if you like flowers, clematis grows well on arbors and trellises, and it's C-L-E-M-A-T-I-S, and I've heard this pronounced two or three different ways from people who grow flowers. They say they're easy to grow, there's a variety of different flower colors, and on the Nature Hills website, they have one called Sweet Autumn Clematis. The description said, the blooms smell like citrus fruit and sponge sugar. Mm. Depending on your climate, grapevines make good screening when they're grown on trellises or two-post arbors. You can also grow hops plants on a trellis or an arbor and then use it to make beer. How cool is that? Super cool. You can check out Nature Hills at naturehills.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-E-H-I-L-L-S dot com. Louisiana State University suggests growing raspberries or blackberries on an arbor or a trellis and then using the fruit for jam or jelly. Cool. When you're shopping for plants online, look at the growing zone, the amount of sun required, the mature height, the mature spread of the plant, the soil type that's recommended, and its water needs. Do you have anything else to add? We went to a couple of home centers and hardware stores this week to take a look at different arbors and trellises, and the selection was very limited. Right, but it could be the time of year. True. Because but... they had a great selection of Halloween decorations. <laughs> we saw some kid get traumatized by some spooky, what it was, was it? It was a, a moving skeleton, a moving talking skeleton. Yeah. Pretty yeah. impressive. He was not happy. <laughs> so take a look online at the variety of styles of arbors and trellises. It's pretty impressive. I saw one arbor that had a swing built into it. No way. Yeah. Exciting. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. 
And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 14 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can follow Cindy on Twitter, at Fixit Co-host. You can follow us on Instagram, Fixit Home Improvement. And you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you think you